Welcome to Build It With Jose. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a cyber planner. And I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get it done. These are some of the tools we're gonna be using for this project. We're gonna use some dug fur, which is exterior material for, for outdoor. We're gonna start by cutting it in half. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it with a circular saw using the straight edge. So we're gonna mark it on the center here. And we're going to use the square to get a, a straight edge. And this is the clamp we're gonna use right here. This clamp will act as a straight edge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the distance from the blade to the fence right here and it looks like it's one inch. We're gonna put this clamp an inch away from my center line. As you can see, that's one inch right there. We're gonna set up the height so we don't wanna cut the bench and we wanna leave a little bit of room right there, like an eighth of an inch. Now we have two, two halves right there. Now we're gonna draw, draw the uh, shape of the, of the planner. I'm gonna leave it 12 inches high. And we're gonna go 12 inches high on this side as well. And if this one is, is 48 inches, we're going to go 20 inches. And that's, we're just gonna try it, see how it works. We're not gonna cut it, we're just gonna draw it out and make sure it's, it's what we like here. That's kind of uh, what we have in mind right there for this box, for this planner. So I'm gonna put a board one inch away from the line. We're gonna go ahead and screw that piece of wood right there. So we're gonna put two screws right here. We wanna make sure it didn't move, it, it did move, so we wanna make sure it's right on the line. And then we'll put another screw right there. So now we're going to uh, cut it with the circular saw. So I'm gonna drop the blade a little more. So we're gonna set it right here. We're gonna make sure we're deep enough so I can cut them at the same time. So just one about an eighth of an inch So we're going to do the same thing, but on the other side now. I'm gonna put a screw. Now we make sure they both lined up perfect. So what we're gonna do is gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. Now we'll take this, this off. And now we have our two parts right here. Now we're going to cut the ends. And the ends have to be 12 inches high. So I'm gonna rip a 12 inch wide piece. And you can use all kinds of materials. I mean, I chose uh, CDX because it's for exterior, but you could do it you know, finished ma materials like this here, which is really, really smooth, but it's not good for exterior. So, so I chose this material. You could, uh, you could also use solid wood if you like. We're gonna set it up at 12 inches. We're gonna cross cut it 16 and a half inches across. We're gonna set the fence back because we really don't wanna have a kickback. These are our two ends right here. For this, we're gonna use glue and a nail gun. And I'm using inch and a half nails here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay it 
on the side. So we'll put some glue here as well. And I lay it flat so it's a little bit easier for me to nail it right here. Put four, four nails. There you have it. Now we'll go ahead and countersink some screws. For that, we'll use the countersink drill bit. We're gonna use inch and a half screws for that. Once the glue dries, the glue is gonna do the job. Glue is stronger than, than the wood itself, so let's do it the other side and do the same. These are inch and a half, number eight screws. And there's your box right there. So what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna mimic the uh, windows of the Cybertruck. Uh, just to give them some detail, create some character to it. We're gonna use the same pieces. This piece I cut it from right here. From right here, that's where we cut this piece. So now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna use it just for template because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a router. We're gonna just inlay the shape of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece. I'm gonna cut it about two inches on the table saw. We have to cut the same amount on this side here. So I'm gonna go back to the saw and cut this one here. Now we'll do the final, the final shape. That's right on the money right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in kind of at an angle right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna screw these two pieces on the on the side, we'll put inch and a quarter. I just don't want it to move. So now what we're gonna use is this router, which it has a top bearing instead of the bottom bearing. I check the height to make sure it's how deep I want it. I don't want it too deep. I just want to have, it just want to create some, a shape in there. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we're gonna use the same pieces, but now they gotta go upside down. We just have to find the center, and we're using two inches away from the, from the edge. So that's why we're gonna keep the two inches right there. And we measure and make sure that we have two inches everywhere. And it looks like we're good right there. We're sending it to get rid of, you know, the stuff like this that can come off. And this is gonna become the legs of the planner. And this is pressure treated lumber. As you can see, that's because it's gonna be touching the ground. Okay, we're gonna set the fence or the stop at 10 inches. There are four pieces, 10 inches high. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put them like this, but inside. We're gonna go this way like this, six inches. That's gonna be a, the height of our legs right there, six inches. Six inches, so we come in, put some glue, 
Right here, a little bit of a, uh, this is a waterproof glue. We're gonna clamp it down right on the mark. We'll use inch and a half screws. There you have it, all four legs. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and cut the bottom. This is gonna fit inside here. That one is gonna fit, that's why I got this in here. We're gonna set it right there. So our bottom is gonna be 16 and a half inches by 46 and a half. So let's go to the table saw. Now we're gonna cross cut it at 46 and a half. I would like to cut the original edge. And let's see. It's a little tight. I don't want to get it tight because then I can pull the joints out. I'm gonna trim it a 16th of an inch. 16th of an inch is about the thickness of your fingernails. It's perfect. That's how we want it. Now, as you can see, it's now nice and nice and solid. The legs are helping to support the, the bottom, basically. That's why the reason I raised them up like this. Ready to screw it in, and then we'll put some supports afterwards. We're gonna screw it onto the legs right now. Now we're gonna use these boards that we were talking about, right there. These are gonna go up right about the middle. They don't have to be exact, it's just for extra support. We're gonna glue it. We use these clamps here, they're very practical. You can use other type, but this seems to work the best for me. So we're gonna put a screw on the side here. Two screws, one on each end. That's as simple as that. Now we do the other side. All right, so that's our bottom. As you can see, I set it in and I use the legs for the support and then I put this extra support here so that when we put the soil, whatever, it'll, it'll be sturdy. Now we'll put one screw inside. That'll keep... Uh, That'll keep it from opening when you put the soil in there. Now we'll put some weatherproofing inside. But before that, we're gonna use this little, these are just PVC from uh, irrigation. It's just, I'm gonna use those for drainage. So we're gonna drill a hole. For that, we're gonna use a hole saw that is inch and three eighths. Right there, so these are gonna slide in like that. That's the other hole, right there. That'll help drain some of the water if it's too much water in there. No, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna plug the holes. All this, all this counter sinks that we have, we need to cover them so when we paint it, it, it looks nice and even. Let's get some bundle here. The trick is that you have to make only so much at a time because it dries really quick depending on how much hardener you put. Put it on, on all, all the holes. I may have to come back and put some more because sometimes you have um, air pockets. So you think it's full, but it's not. You have to come back and put some more. So we'll wait about five minutes and then it's ready to scrape it or sand it or whatever we need to do there. We're also gonna need this waterproofing paper, which is the stuff you use for the roofs. But uh, I like to put that in there because it is gonna help for uh, waterproofing the bottom of, of the planter there. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna measure the, we, well, we know the bottom is 16 and a half. So I'm gonna just try to get a center. So we're gonna go 10 inches on each side, nine inches right here. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna do that. Okay. We need 16 and a half inches actually. So what I do is I measure 16 and a half inches. So I have 19 inches, so I can go 10 inches on either side. So I can cut it at a 45 right here. I think that's what we're gonna do here. Now we'll see how it works out when we fold it. And there it is. We'll see how it fits. I'm gonna start by stapling that side. Put a couple of staples right there. Just a couple. Of. Now what we'll do is I'm gonna trim all this excess paper here. Well, now we're gonna put this drain fittings here. Basically like just like that. You just have to poke a hole there with your fingers. Now all we have to do is do some sanding. <laughs> What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna spray it with a, a gray paint enamel, and then we're gonna come back and do the window a different color. The next step is gonna be to paint this panel that looks like a window. We're gonna paint it black. We're gonna start by mask taping in here. Usually we put some tape but in paper but in this case I'm just gonna use tape just because it's a small area and then we're gonna spray it with rosolium stuff you can buy at Home Depot or whatever a good quality you gotta be really careful not to put too much we'll put a second coat later right now I'm just trying to get a hundred percent of the area but that's it so we'll see how it looks when we take the tape off. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, if you look at the material, I have a little bit of overspray of the black. So you can see the difference right here. You see a little bit of shadow right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some steel wool rather than having to paint again. This is really fine, like triple oil. And you're gonna see it pretty much disappearing and without damaging the, the other finish. That takes care of the overspray. This is how you make a cyber planner.